Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. Shalom, shalom, Israel. Most high Christ bless. Welcome to another episode of 15 Minutes with the Captain. I'm Captain Aon. To my right, Officer Joshua. All praises. And today's topic that we go dive into is how to recover from sin. All right. And this is going to be a good one because recovering from sin, we are going to have to go through that some point in time or process of time in this truth, in this walk. All right. True recovery. Of what? Our sins. Our own doing. All right. Not like the world, you know, when they just think, you know, ask God for forgiveness and keep doing the sin. Right. So let's, I'm going to read the definition of recovery. All right. It says, well, reco recover, but recovery is the word. It says a return to a normal state of health, mind, or strength. So that's the understanding of the process of recovery all right you're recovering your health all right because some people via sins may dive into what different types of drugs from weed cocaine crack pills so on and so forth these are sins that some of us have been uh, plagued with in what in the world and it carries over into the truth we're still doing what purging these things out all right and the mind because your mind is what? In sin. Your mind is, uh, I want to say, consumed with sin. All right. So synonyms of recovery. All right. Rehabilitation. That's a good one. Healing. Betterment. Renewal. And we're going to read precepts that kind of touches on these different synonyms of what it means to recover from sin. All right. Uh, first thing that we all have to understand and realize is that in knowing that we are in sin, we have to do what? Acknowledge the sins. All right. First key thing is acknowledging because you yourself can know that you're doing wrong and somebody else can see you doing wrong. But you have to acknowledge that you are in the midst of sin. Okay, first, let's go to first John one and eight. All right. First John one and verse eight. The book of first John chapter one, verse eight. Uh -huh. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. That's most of our people. All right. It says if we say that we have no sin. We deceive ourselves. That's a lot of us. We deceive ourselves because we don't want to do what? Admit, confess to what? The sin that we're in. The things that are ailing us and plaguing us. All right. Why? Because a lot of us are what? Ashamed. Ashamed of, you know, still dabbling with the old man. Maybe we, maybe women. Who knows? I don't know. But whatever you're battling with, you're ashamed to bring that forth because you are scared or afraid or ashamed of what man is going to say or think about you. When you should be afraid of who? The most high, the high power. All right. First thing you got to understand is nothing can be hid. All right. Let's get that in Luke 18 right quick. We will go back to John. But let's get that in Luke. Luke 8 and 17. Nothing is hid from the most high. All right. Nothing. But we, again, thinking that we getting over on the, the men that do see us or the people around us. We lie to ourselves. We deceive ourselves thinking that I can fix this myself. I don't need anybody to help me fix myself. 
that's where you the first mistakes are going wrong right there, thinking that you could do it alone. You need your brothers and your sisters to help uh, help you through the situation. And we, we just read some of the synonyms was what? Rehab. You have to go to rehab. That's the part of recovering from sin. Like the AA meetings, Alcohol Anonymous, so on and so forth. You are in recovering stages of your sins. All right? But some like to hide because they don't want to start on their process. Let's read that. The book of Luke, chapter 8, verse 17. Uh -huh. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest. It said nothing is secret. So what we think we're hiding, you're really not. All right? You may be hiding from man, but you're not hiding from the most high. He sees you. And he has a way of sending a little bird, sending a, a righteous brother or sister. Let's go apply, apply Leviticus 5 and 1 to bring that to the attention of leadership so you can get help, so you can start on your road to recovery. Read. Neither anything hid that shall not be known. Neither anything hid that shall not be known. And what? And come abroad. And come abroad. Meaning it's going to come to pass. Meaning it's going to come forth because everything that we go through is for example. You understand? Let's read that right quick in Sirach 23. All right, Sirach 23. Because, again, we cannot hide anything from the Most High. Yeah. 2316. The book of Sirach, chapter 23, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Two sorts of men multiply sin, and the third will bring wrath. A hot mind is as burning fire. It will never be quenched till it be consumed. A fornicator in the body of his flesh will never cease till he hath kindled a fire. It said, two sorts of men multiply sin, and the third will be will bring wrath. A hot mind is as a burning fire and will never be quenched till it be consumed. That's brothers and sisters that do what? They can't control their anger. All right? Their anger gets them so inflamed that they do ignorant things, that they may harm somebody. All right? And it's going to be consumed with what? Fire. Because at the end of the day, it's called what? Jail. It's called the most I can bring forth death to you, to your doorstep. All right? It says, what the last one said? Fornicators. A fornicator in the body of his flesh will never cease till he be kindled, till he had kindled a fire. So go to, uh, hold that right quick, Joe, go to Proverbs. Because we as people, we love to play with fire. Go to Proverbs 6 and uh, 27. And, and when I say play with fire, that means play with your sins. You understand? Playing with those things that you know will bring forth destruction. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 27. Mm -hmm. Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burnt? That's the question. Can he do that? No. They're going to be burnt up. They're going to be consumed with fire. Go ahead. Can one go upon hot coals and his feet not be burnt? No, they will be burnt. You will have scar scars on your uh, feet. All right. Read. So he that goeth into his neighbor wife. Whosoever toucheth her shall not be innocent. You will not be innocent in these cases because you will be consumed with the fire. You understand? The fire of what? Your flesh, which equals what? Your sins. You understand? Go back. Sirach 23 and verse 17. The book of Sirach, chapter 23, verse 17. All bread is sweet to a whoremonger. He will not leave off till he dies. See that? That's that fire. That's the consuming of what? You're a whoremonger. You, you, you don't care what she look like. You don't care nothing. Fat, short, whatever. You're consumed with your lust. The most I sees this within you. And he knows this needs to be purged out. But you have to what? Confess these things. You have to what? Come forth and start on the road to recovery. Go ahead. 
a man that breaketh wedlock, saying thus in his heart, who seeth me? So this is the man that's what, married, that breaketh wedlock. He go and commit what? Adultery. Go ahead. I am compassed about with darkness. The walls cover me, and nobody seeth me. He say, I'm over here in this hotel doing me with this chick that's not my wife, committing adultery. Who see me? Nobody. Go ahead. What need I to fear? I don't have to fear nobody because nobody knows I'm here. My wife, my kids, they over there at, they, at her parents' house. They distracted. They, they, they occupied right now. She think I'm at work. We think that we're hiding something from, from the most high, but mainly man. But you're not. You hide, you're not hiding anything from the most high. What we don't see, the most high see. Go ahead. The most high will not remember my sins. That's what we think. Okay, go ahead. Such a man only fear of the eyes of men. That's it. We only fear what men see or what men don't see because we're not scared. Go ahead. And knoweth not that the eyes of the Lord are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. See that? So the most high's eyes are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. Go ahead. Beholding all the ways of men mm -hmm. and considering the most secret parts. And considering the most secret parts. So those things that we think we're hiding, we're not. The most high is going to bring forth a messenger, an angel, to bring forth that sin that you in to the prophets. All right. Go to 1 Corinthians uh, 10 and 13. 10 and 13. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 13. Uh -huh. They have no temptation taken you, but such as common to man. It said, there is no temptation that hath taken you that is common to man. All the temptation that's out here in the world, somebody deals with it. Somebody has went through it. You understand? But they have also overcame it. Read the, keep going. But God is faithful, mm -hmm. who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. The Most High knows that we are going to be tempted to draw into our own lust, but it's always He always going to leave a way out. He always going to have that brother or that sister be there for us if you utilize them to pull you out of that the sin. All right, go ahead. But well, with that. Well, with the temptation also make a way to escape. Yes, it's always a way to escape. Always. Because your thoughts have to be what? On the scriptures. All right. From there, go to uh, Baruch 2 and 12. Baruch 2 and 12. You got to remember as well, in, the, in, the, in the, the sins that we commit and the recovery of that sin, goes into the exposing of it because a lot of times a lot of brothers and sisters don't come forth as we go get to with confessing their sins they have to be what brought out brought to their attention are you in this sin brother are you in this sin sister did you commit this did you do that you understand okay these are things sometimes that will come to the light as we just read because the most high wants to use these things, these sins that our people are in for examples. All right, read that. The book of Baruch, chapter 2, verse 12. Mm -hmm. O Lord, our God, we have sinned. Mm -hmm. We have done ungodly. Yes. We have dealt unrighteously in all thine ordinances. You see that? It say, O, o Lord, O God, our God, we have sinned. We all have sinned. Okay? We all have sinned. And come short of the glory, as it says in Romans. But at the end of the day, it's about what? Correcting that. Okay. Go to Psalms. Psalms 141. That's what I want first. Yeah, Psalms 141 and verse 5. The book of Psalms, chapter 141 and verse 5. Mm -hmm. Let the righteous smite me. Mm -hmm. It shall be a kindness. And let him reprove me. It shall be an excellent oil, mm -hmm. which shall not break my head. Mm -hmm. For yet my prayer also shall be in their calamities. It said, let the righteous smite me. Let the leaders correct you. Let the leaders set you in order. Because a lot of times, 
Correction is grievous. Let's read that right quick. Let's go to uh, Surat 20 and 1. I think that's what I'm on. Sometime correction is going to come. I think that's what I want. Yeah, read that. The book of Sirach, chapter 20, and verse 1. There is a reproof that is not calmly. Again, some man holdeth his tongue. So that, that first precept says there's a reproof that is not calmly, meaning it don't feel good, meaning you think because it, going back to the part in which, because this is a brother or sister that didn't come forth and confess their sins, all right, but they have to be made that example. This is a part of your recovery. This is a part of you, uh, the healing process. You're starting the healing process, all right? And the rebuke is not comely all the time. Go to 1 Timothy 5 and 20. My bad. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 5, verse 20. Mm -hmm. Them that sin rebuke before all that others also may fear. Sometimes that, that's the case. Not all cases are in that, that fashion, but some sins that brothers and sisters commit, because remember, especially the scriptures say, he that uh, shall be with men of stripes, I'm butchering it. Oh, yeah. The book of Luke, chapter 12, verse 47. And that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. So that servant is the one that's talking about that know this truth. That been in his truth and his walk for some time. That is the one that's going to be beaten with many stripes. He or she will be the one that's stood before the congregation and be made an example, reproof, corrected in front of all that others may fear because this person is supposed to know better. This person, person brother or sister, is supposed to be an example to you, younger brothers and sisters. You understand? So, this is a part of your recovery, getting corrected. And just to quote some of them, uh, of being from that example of getting corrected in front of everybody, more than likely the next correction or judgment will be you getting put out the body. All right. That's a part of your recovery. All right. You dealing with a, a specific brother or sister. That's a part of your recovery. You understand? It doesn't feel good. You don't want it. But that sin overtook you. Now you have to start in that recovery process of getting your mind right, getting built back up. All right. So from there, let's go to Proverbs 24 and 16. Proverbs 24, 16. Again, we quoted it earlier but and read it, but we all sin. We're not perfect. We're striving for perfection. All right. Go ahead. The book of Proverbs, chapter 24, verse 16. For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. You say a just man falls seven times. Seven just a number, all right? Number of completion. It's not saying just seven times. It's a numerous of times we're going to fall. But it said he get back up. That just man is going to catch himself. That just man is going to reach out to a brother or sister and let them know, hey, I did this. I did that. I need help. All right, go ahead. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. That's the brother or sister that don't want help. That's the one that say, I got this. That's the one that makes excuses to themselves to say, I just hit her one time. That was the only time I hit her. I won't do it no more. But no, you need help, brother. You have an abusive spirit on you, brother. You need counseling. Okay? So this is the thing that you have to realize. That just man is going to seek out the help. Go to uh, John, back to John, 1 John 1 and 9. That, that brother or sister that uh, realized and, and acknowledged their sins, they go do this. Go ahead. The book of 1 John, chapter mm -hmm. 1, verse 9. Uh -huh. If we confess our sins. If we what? If we confess our sins. If we confess our sins. We must confess. That's a part of you acknowledging. That's the, part, that's the first steps of you saying, there's something wrong with me. I need help. I need, I can't do this alone. 
These are your steps to recovery from sin. Because nobody, no man is an island. He need people on that island to help him. He going to need things that need to be done. We all need healing with, our, with, with inside of ourselves. And all brothers and sisters around of us are here to help us with that healing. All right. Go ahead. Read it again. If we confess our sins. And first off, you're not go confess your sins to us first. You go confess to the most high. Meaning acknowledge. And we forget that as well. He knows already. We, we just read that, right? Ain't nothing hid from him. He know what you did. You know, you know what you did in the closet by yourself. You know what you did with that woman at the hotel. You know what you did with the, the cat you used to roll with back in the day. That sold weed. He know these things. So you need to confess to the most high because he's the one that's going to have to forgive you of your sins. We're here to help instruct and show you the right way to go. Go ahead. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most high is faithful and just to forgive us. He told us we fall seven times, but we go get back up. We have to confess these things to him. From there, Psalms 51. We have to go in the process of our forefather David. All right. And see what he did when he when he sinned, when he erred in the ways of sin against the Most High. Let's read that. Read verse 1. The book of Psalms, chapter 51, verse 1. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. According unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. That's one thing that we have to realize and understand. The Most High is long-suffering. The Most High is merciful to us, to Israel, to the 12 tribes. That's something that he, he never stopped doing, all right? Because we will be off the face of the earth. Go ahead. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity. Say, wash me, cleanse me. How do you get washed? Ephesians 5 and 26 with the word this word is what's going to cleanse you from all the sins that you've been doing all the sins that overtake took you this word will cleanse you from them go ahead and cleanse me from my sin all right go ahead for i acknowledge my transgressions for I what for i acknowledge my transgressions i acknowledge i acknowledge all right that you are dealing with this that you are battling this that you need help in this. Go ahead. And my sin is ever before me. My sin is ever before me. My sin is plaguing me. My sin is overtaking me. I need help. Okay. Jump to verse 7. Verse 7. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. That's the point. We're trying to be cleansed. That's that part of the recovery. Trying to be cleansed from our sins. All right. Go ahead. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Mm -hmm. Make me to hear joy and gladness, mm -hmm. that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all mine iniquities. Mm -hmm. Create in me a clean heart, of O God, and renew a right spirit within me. You say, create in me a clean heart. You have to cleanse your mind from all the filth that you have inside. All the things that you battle that, that overcame you, you have to purge it out of you. Okay? It says, cleanse, uh, be creating me a clean heart, your mind. It says, and renew. That's one of the words, renewal. That's the part of recovery. Renewing in you a right spirit. Re renewing in you a righteous man or a righteous woman. The path of the most high. All right, go ahead. Verse 11. Verse 11. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. You say, cast me not away because we don't, you don't want the most high to cast you away. We don't want that. I don't want that. The most high to cast you away and take his spirit from you. And you're going to be like one of these brothers or sisters that was in this truth for five, six, seven, ten, fifteen years. Now they back in the world, back doing drugs, back fornicating back whoremongering you don't want that back in the clubs back smoking weed you don't want to be that 
that spirit that now have become to be be nothing in the most eyes of the most high. All right, let's go to Ecclesiastes 4. Ecclesiastes 4 and 9. Remember, on this path of forgiveness or recovering from sin, you need help along this path. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, verse 9. Two are better than one. Read it again. Two are better than one. It says two are better than one. The scriptures say, out of a council, have one of a thousand. You have to have brothers and sisters around you that mean you well. Not trimming your way to seek love of those in the world, because that's a part of you staying in that sin. That's a, that's that's one of your your your, uh, your hurdles that you have to overcome. That's one of your it's the word I'm looking for, but this is that's one of your your devices that's holding you from keeping these commandments fully. And not letting that sin overtake you. All right. Go ahead. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. The one will lift up his fellow. That brother will be there for me when I have battle with this, when I battle with that. When I need help in my marriage. When I need help trying to figure out how to maneuver in my job. The brothers are there. The sisters are there to help give you that wisdom. To help show you the right path and how to move with what? With wisdom. All right? Being harmless as a dove. Go ahead. But woe unto him that is alone. Woe unto him that is alone because that's when you out there with your family. You chilling with your family. You think that nothing can happen to you. I know the truth. I'm good. No. That temptation is going to come and walk right past you. And you're going to fall for that temptation because you're not strong enough. You need to be around the, the brothers and sisters that's keeping the commandments. Go ahead. But woe unto him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. You don't have anybody to help you. You don't have anybody to correct you. So remember, the first part I, I showed you was on some different uh, corrections for the sins. Some are harsher than others. But we won't leave a brother or sister out to just, you know, go back into the world. We're still going to be there to help them. You understand? Go to Galatians 6 and 1. Through these steps, you will and can be whole again. All right? Read that. The book of Galatians, chapter 6, verse 1. Uh -huh. Brethren. If a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. The Bible is telling us that we, if a brother or sister be overtaken in what? The sin. We all will be overtaken in the sin. But we as brethren and sisters, we understand that we been through the same thing. We are here to help you to recover yourself, to think about it, to renew in you the clean heart. All right. It said with meekness. I'm sorry, I'm saying it's not meek. It says, yeah, with meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted, because we all are tempted when we're drawn from what? Our own lust. Okay, go ahead. Bear ye one another's burdens. They say, bear ye one another's burden. How you do that? What you battling with, bro? What you need help with? That brother or sister that's battling those sins, they need help. I'm going to bear the burdens. Be on the phone with this sister or brother, counseling with this sister or brother, counseling with this married couple for two, three, four hours till they get it. Till they understand this is what you need. This is the step that you have to take to recover yourself from the sins that you've been in, an abusive marriage. And whatever you're going through, it's a way to recover from that sin. All right. Go ahead. And so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. And go back again. You're deceiving yourself. You're deceiving yourself to think, I got this. But you don't. 
your brethren and sisters have to help you through this, through the recovery process, the rehabilitation of your spirit being healed. All right. Let's go to uh, First Thessalonians 5 and 17. This is another part of the recovery process. Knowing that your brother or sister going to be there to help you and, and build you up and be there to help you recover from it, this is the thing that you have to do yourself. Go ahead. The book of 1 Thessalonians, mm -hmm. chapter 5, verse 17. Mm -hmm. Pray without ceasing. Mm -hmm. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. It say pray without ceasing. That's one thing that's going to help you stay on the path to what? to righteousness and recover from your sin is praying to the most high asking for forgiveness asking for mercy all right that's our mindset that's our job because he's the one that's faithful and just to forgive us if we do what ask and you do that through what prayer you have to change your focus from the sin that they'll consume you to the righteous man a righteous woman all right from there, let's go to Daniel 6 and 10. Daniel 6 and 10. The book of Daniel, chapter 6, verse 10. Now when Daniel knew that the writings were signed, he went into his house, and his house windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed. And gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. This is, I use this as an example because he, he prayed what? Three times a day. For you to be able to recover from your sins, you have to meditate and fast. Get that one right quick. Fasting. You have to fast and pray. Fast and pray. That's what we have to do. You understand? If we don't do that, you're going to fall. All right. You got it? 17 and 21. Matthew. The book of Matthew, chapter 17, verse 21. How be it, this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. See that? Prayer and fasting. Daniel prayed three times a day. Most I say, pray to me. Pray to me. Okay? Pray without ceasing. And fasting. Fasting teaches you what? Discipline. Go there right quick. Uh, Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 5. We have to have discipline. All these steps will help you recover. Will help you be whole. All right? Go ahead. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit and remove from thoughts that are without understanding and will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in. You see that? It says, for the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit. All right? I mean, you won't deceive your own self no more. You will understand, man, I need help. I really need help. I'm addicted to X, Y, Z. Okay? All of us have sins that overtake us some people are addicted to food all right alcohol so on and so forth but you need help to recover from the sins that consume you all right and it starts with discipline it said it will flee deceit it said and remove from thoughts that are without uh, understanding and will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in when that sins tempt you when your mind go left instead of straight you will understand the discipline, all right? Discipline will flee that. All right, from there, let's go to Sirach 18 and 14. 18 14. The book of Sirach, chapter 18, verse 14. He had mercy on them that receive discipline and that diligently seek after his judgments. Say he have mercy on them that receive discipline. We have to receive discipline. That's a part of you getting the mercy from the most high. That you saying, man, I have to be disciplined. That's what, that's what, when you 
look into these AA meetings and so on and so forth, the rehabilitation centers, they're showing you and teaching you how to be disciplined. All right. From there, let's go to 2 Corinthians 7 and 10. 2 Corinthians 7 and 10. The book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 7, verse 10. For godly sorrow. What? Godly sorrow. Godly sorrow. All right. You have to be sorrowful to the most high. Not just uh, our service for men, but really truly be sorry of the actions that you took that took place, that you partook in. All right, go ahead. For godly sorrow worketh repentance. Godly sorrow worketh repentance. Repentance. More steps in what you have to do to recover yourself. Repent from the sins that you've done to the most high, not to man. All right. We're only here going to give you a judgment, a, a, a judgment. That's it. We can't kill you. We can't do nothing else to you, but, but put you out or reprimand you, so on and so forth. That's it. But the most high can put you to death. The most high can put a plague on you. All right. Go ahead. To salvation. Mm hmm. Not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. The sorrow of the world worketh death. Those things, these things of the world consume us and bring us forth to death. All right. Go to uh, Colossians 3 and 5. The book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 5. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, mm -hmm. fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. These are the sins that consume us. These are the sins that overtake us. Go ahead. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. On disobedience. Instead of being disobedient, we're going to be obedient and have what? Discipline. Part of your recovery. Go ahead. In the which... Ye also walked sometime when ye lived in them. But now ye also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. So that's it. We have to be renewed in the knowledge of him that created him. You understand? Second Samuels, first Samuels two and three. The new man, it says, be renewed in knowledge after him, by after the image of him that created him. Go ahead. The book of first Samuel, chapter two, verse three. Talk no more exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. We have to what? Say we can't do it alone. Say you need help. All right. We can't be carnal in these, in the mindset of being recovered from sin. Go ahead. For the Lord is a God of knowledge and by him actions are weighed. Actions are weighed. And that godly sorrow that you sin, Lord, forgive me. I repent. This, that, and the third. Your actions are going to tell forth. Do you truly, uh, are you truly asking for forgiveness? Do you truly understand what you did was wrong? Do you truly understand the ramifications of the sin that you were in? Okay. So with that, Israel, we say shalom. I pray y'all got something from the class. Um, most high Christ bless. Most high Christ bless. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, Nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana. Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart.
the scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.